Welcome to the Idaho Insider. So just a quick video today on what's going on in Virginia and their assault weapons ban that looks like it's moving through legislation and might be headed to being an actual law, unfortunately. So let's see what's going on with that and what might happen if it does pass. Let's get into it. So surprise, 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 Democrats over in Virginia are pushing hard on a number of gun control bills that are making their way through the House and the Senate. Um, a couple of these include a five-day waiting period for all purchases of firearms. Um, and this also requires bar buyers to provide competency tests uh, through gun safety courses, right? This would also create a $500 civil penalty penalty for leaving a handgun visible in an unattended vehicle it removes gun rights from anyone who gets two dui convictions within five years because the connection between duis and people owning firearms i don't know um, and this also prohibits existing assault weapons from being carried in public and requires state issued permits prior to any gun purchase my goodness because that's gonna just stop all the crime right anyway um again well, the big one that i'm talking about is their assault weapon ban so let's talk about that one so it looks like the bill would create a class one misdemeanor and land anybody guilty of it up to 12 months in jail and or face a $2,500 fine. And now this is for anyone who imports, sells, manufactures, purchases, possesses, transport or transfers an assault firearm, which, you know, it's amazing that they were able to come to any sort of understanding of what they even consider an assault weapon, because you ask anybody in Congress and it's, uh, 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 well, so under this bill, um, they define them as weapons capable of being used with high capacity magazines. I think they mean just standard capacity magazines, right? Um, because the, the high capacity magazines, magazines they're talking about for these weapons can be purchased for any weapon. I mean, literally anything from your Ruger 1022 um, to any sort of handgun to any sort of rifle, basically, um, that has a magazine fed um, receiver, right? So, you know, high capacity, that's just another made up term. Um, and it says other modifications like stocks, okay, grips, and suppressors uh, would all fall under this um, and make something an assault weapon. An assault's an action. I, it's not an object. Um, but anyway, um, it excludes such weapons made prior to July 1st. Um, and this allows us assault weapon owners to keep firearms they have already purchased legally. Uh, the restrictions would only apply to assault weapons manufactured after the ban were to take effect. Uh, but again, it still restricts anybody from transferring said firearms so once you pass away what happens to those firearms that fall under this definition um if you want to give one um away to a family member whatever you can't do that so it's kind of left up in the air i guess you're just supposed to surrender them at that point it doesn't make it clear but again this is what they're trying to do with this bill so one little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel is that it looks like, you know, Governor Yunkin in Virginia is a friend to the 2A community and a supporter of the Second Amendment, you know, so hopefully he'll be able to squelch some of these things so that they don't go through and that they continue to enjoy their Second Amendment constitutional rights. Um, you know, he has made statements that, you know, Virginia has some of the, you know, toughest laws uh, in the nation concerning these sort of things and that you know uh, these sort of things especially this just goes after law-abiding citizens right he's also asked the general assembly members to hold accountable those criminals that commit crimes with guns by lengthening and making more severe the penalties in order to keep criminals off the street which just make more sense because you look at places like california that allow you know people that have had you know records of horrendous assaults and things like that where they use firearms even murderers that are out walking the street waiting for court dates you know they they let these people ride out um with a slap on the wrist or almost nothing and then they do it again and they blame the gun as though the criminal had nothing to do with it it was the gun's fault you know whatever um you know and one of the um representatives there in virginia also made the statement that you know one of um you know he noted that rifles of any kind are rarely used in gun homicides or suicides which is 100 percent correct so it makes you wonder why um these these committees and these people are going after this small portion and these specific types of rifles um as though they they account for the majority of crime um which they don't right so it seems that you know like many people are saying these are stepping stones they if they can scare enough people into getting rid of rid of these scary rifles um then they can next they'll be like you know didn't get rid of enough crime there's still always 
organized crime. What's next? Handguns. Okay, what's next? Every other rifle, right? So it seems like a, a, a stepping stone and opening the door to basically get what most of the Democrats want. And that's, you know, to get rid of every gun and get rid of your Second Amendment rights. So uh, we'll see where this goes. Um, like I said, this is going through pretty quick. A lot of these, some of them haven't been heard yet. Some of them will be, um, but this is a big one. So we'll, I'll keep you updated on it. I appreciate everybody being here. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll see everybody on the next one.